Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. I'm sorry for not getting out any updates uh, in the last few days. The activity in the cryptocurrency markets has been so absolutely insane that I just haven't been able to do that. Uh, and I really wasn't able to do it tonight either, but I just decided to go ahead and do it while I'm trading and uh, just uh, to try to show you what I'm doing. Um, so right now, Bitcoin is down roughly $700. I exited every position uh, back when Bitcoin was $26.50. Let's see if we can find it on this chart. Uh, right around in here uh, I I sleep in USDT uh, tether every night um, I may not sleep in 100% tether tonight but uh, I usually do and I was expecting a big correction especially with the stuff with cliff high and the web bot and with uh, J snips and and all of the new people I've seen coming into this who don't know anything about it that's <clears throat> uh, tends to be the sign of a top or at least an intermediate top now what I've been doing I still been scaling out uh, I'm still stuck you can see here I'll show you my account balance um, on Poloniex. I know I said I was getting off Poloniex. It's still about $74,000, which I can't get off of there. I still have 2500 left to remove today, but I can't sell it at Coinbase because um, I am at my limit there. So I've just been trying to hedge and bet. Uh, the one differential that I have been playing here has been this differential between Coinbase and the USDT market here on Poloniex. So a couple of times today, when I did get near my limit, uh, I uh, bought a coin here. I think I bought a Bitcoin for about 2,000 here and sold it at, on Poloniex for 2,300. You can see the differential here is still ridiculously high. We're, we're at 2,224 on Coinbase we're at 1975 on Bitfinex, 1970 right now. It looks like, so it looks like we're about ready to plunge into new lows. The Russian exchange has been showing a serious kind of falling pennant. You can see the formation forming here. We've got a serious falling pennant here. One, two, three, four. We're at the fifth test of this. Uh, okay coin now is testing low so one thing I do is I bought between back and forth between China Russia and the United States to see where the prices are and usually this this downdraft has actually been driven out of China if you look at the chart um, the selling the bulk of the selling started in China I can't show you that here but uh, that's what I observed so we'll just go through the charts here. I'm gonna wait, I'm not buying any more right now. You can see I have 10 Bitcoin that I scaled in at roughly about 2000 where I picked those up. I'm kind of playing for a bounce. I don't think the bottom's in yet, but you can see I still have $52,000 there in cash waiting to buy more. Playing for a bounce. Again, I'll probably sleep in tether tonight, but um, looking for extreme pricing. So back to the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm scatterbrained. There's just uh, so much going on. Uh, so back to the Chinese chart. Um, analyzing the Chinese chart, I think we're looking at uh, possible correction down to here. 11,000 yuan. That's 2,000 more yuan. And what does that equate to? I don't even know. Maybe 150 bucks per thousand you want maybe another 300 bucks lower uh, 16 1700 on Bitcoin uh, the Bitfinex chart uh, we're very very close to this level here you can see we will expect a big bounce around 1915 um, that doesn't mean that that's 
the end of it. That doesn't mean the selling is over, but these things tend to go in bounces. If you look in the short-term chart here, you can see that we've been we've been coming down and bouncing. The first sell-off from 2690 brought us down to uh, 2244. We bounced all the way up to 25. Then we came down and sold off to 2138. We bounced again to 25. We sold off to 2,000 roughly. We bounced to 2,200. Now the big question is, how low are we going to go this time and are we going to bounce? Uh, so let's go back to the Russian exchange. We want to see where support is on the Russian exchange. I think I looked at the Chinese exchange. So based on the daily chart, now we have to come in closer. Based on this chart, uh, support for the Russian exchange is going to come in around $1,800. So we may have some significant downside from here. And that may be a bit for next. Long term, um, $1,250, $1,300. That's where, that's how Bitcoin tends to move. Now, I don't have any altcoins, you can see. I have exactly nothing. <laughs> I have. Uh, five times the amount I have in, uh, or I have two times the amount in Tether that I have in Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin and Tether. That's all I have. But if we look at the altcoins, you have the thing you have to remember about the altcoins. Now I do have some in wallets. I have a lot of coins in wallets, but I don't consider those part of my trading uh, position. They're just sitting there in wallets. They're long-term investments. But as far as trading. You have to remember here with with the alt coins, they're quoted in Bitcoin. So when the alt coins are going up, when you have a coin that's winning here, like do we have any? Yeah, we have Bitmark and Nautilus coin and Stratus that are winning. <clears throat> when you have a coin winning uh, against Bitcoin, and you have that. Uh, and you have Bitcoin going up, you're getting a double win. You're winning on both positions. The altcoin is going up in value against Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is going up in value against the dollar. So it's a double win, and you can make a tremendous amount of money that way. Now, the converse is also true that you can lose a tremendous amount of money. Just by the way, this Bitmark. Um, I wouldn't play this because of the action is ridiculously thin at 58 Bitcoin. This may be a big mover, but I'm not going to play it. It's too thin, and I would expect the spreads to be really wide. Uh, 43, 43, they're not that wide. Um, wow, that looks to be legit. You can see there's very little on the offer. Still not going to play it. Um, so you have to remember that the... Uh, when you're in a downdraft in Bitcoin and you're in a downdraft in the altcoin, this is Ardor, the biggest loser, you're, you're a double loser. So really, uh, I was shopping, window shopping for cheap altcoins <clears throat> yesterday and then the realization just came firmly into my mind that you cannot play altcoins when Bitcoin is in a bear market. You just simply can't do it. You have to wait for Bitcoin to stabilize and enter either you really want to be in a bull market in Bitcoin or you want to be in a sideways market in Bitcoin. But you do not want to be in a bear market in Bitcoin if you're playing in the alts because it's just there's too much potential to lose. So back to the analysis here. Um, we're not really getting follow through on this. We would expect it to be lower at this point. We're not getting follow through. So on the Chinese exchange, uh, yeah, definitely not follow through. Bitfinex at 1950, that's a really low price. That's kind of out, uh, out of sync, I would say. Now let's go check the USDT market. We're at 1935 in USDT. Um, so one of the ways you play this, uh, the USDT market, is that the the spread is really wide here. 
Uh, right now it's not, surprisingly, but you have to look at how thin these are. So we're looking at 1936 by 1940, but there's no volume at 1940s. So it's really 1941. 1936 by 1941. Sometimes when we're volatile, it's like 20 bucks. So you have to be careful. And what you can do is you can go in here. This looks like this may be a bounce, that huge volume there. Um, you can go in here and just put click the top price and then you just put like I want to buy one Bitcoin and uh, just put it right there you might get picked off if you do get picked off you get picked off at the cheap price it's it's a lot of action so it's it's possible that you get picked off you definitely don't want to just buy at the ask because this ask can jump up like 20 or 30 bucks and you'll get filled way above the market like this 2052 price you get filled up there and you have an automatic big loss so you don't want to do that so we're still looking at scaling in uh, looking for a bounce and like I said I watch China and Russia and uh, usually they lead uh, Bitfinex and Bitfinex and the other two also lead the USDT market so it's looking like we might get a bounce here um, I'm thinking that I might want to buy one more Bitcoin playing for the bounce or I may want to get some cheaper prices here let's see what the chart looks like in USDT so you can see that's a pretty hideous chart we're already see we're right almost there for bounce zone I mean we're about Mm, at 1897 just give it a rough 1900 1900 is is it so yeah I think I'm gonna play for a bounce for one more Bitcoin we'll just go to the high bid here put in one buy one at that 1928 price and unless we bottom tick the market which is highly unlikely the market will probably trade down into us if not then we miss it and we just let it run away from us and that's fine so we'll check back on that one now so you can see here we get we're getting a rally here in China let's see if we're getting a rally in Russia now Russia is still at the lows Bitfinex is starting to rally and let's see if we got filled uh, we're trying to get in at 1928 uh, 1931 1929 it's close so if we really wanted to get filled here, we could come in and change this up to say 1930. We'd probably get filled. Although the market seems to be running pretty fast. It's up to 33 now by 4062. Okay, so we're probably gonna miss this boat. Uh, it looks like we're getting a big bounce. Let's check these not that much there China was where the action was happening not that much there so 1925 now so we probably got filled yeah we got filled uh, so now we're carrying 11 bitcoins that's about all I want to carry at this point I have the ability to get twice as much uh, or even three times as much at lower prices which we may get I'm not comfortable carrying any more Bitcoin at these prices uh, playing for a bounce. Um, worst case scenario, I'm still bullish. Let's talk about the Cliff High information. So Cliff High basically predicted, uh, I haven't bought the WebBot report yet, but Cliff High basically predicted that we'd get a $500 pullback. You can see we've already gotten we're starting to look at maybe a thousand dollar pullback here um, but uh, Cliff High predicted a five hundred dollar pullback and that was just the beginning of um, a long bull market just a correction in a long bull market and his argument that he gave today in one of the videos that I watched him do was was fairly convincing it was uh, that the number of people that he knows and that he has met and he's talked to and just other people anecdotally talking about uh, is such a low number of people that 
know about Bitcoin and talk about Bitcoin that there's no way that this is a bubble. Now that that doesn't mean that it's not uh, due for a huge correction because I've, I've been expecting a huge correction for quite some time. But in terms of being a bubble that crashes, a, a bubble's pop and you know like a balloon uh, it doesn't get blown back up again. It's popped. It, it's thrown in the trash. So I agree with Cliff on that. That's not the kind of thing that we're looking at here. We're not looking at a bubble popping, but we are looking at a correction. So how far is the correction going to go? Now remember, I've, I've warned that Bitcoin has had multiple 90% corrections. I don't think we're going to get a 90% correction this time, but Bitcoin has had multiple 90% corrections. Uh, the Chinese Yuan seems to be saying that uh, the correction is going to be back to about that 8,000 price. That's roughly 60% correction. But we've already done quite a bit of that damage. We've already done uh, here in the Chinese Yuan We've gone from a high of 19,002 to 13,000. So we've almost done that. Uh, we're already in the stages of, of a big correction. We can definitely go lower. So let's jump back to the USDT. Um, it's getting wild and crazy. Look at the volume. That's insanity. Uh, we're bid 1915. It seems like the selling is still very, very strong. Now we don't have new lows in China, which is really quite strange, considering that uh, we have new lows everywhere else, but we don't have new lows in China. And China has been driving this thing. And we got a new low here on Bitfinex. We've got a, a modest new low on the Russian exchange. Like I said, the, the formation on the Russian exchange is extremely bearish. That is a that is one of this formation here is one of the most bearish formations that you'll ever see in a market. This is a, a mirror image of the rising pennant formation. And also I as I played earlier today, if this reverses itself, it's extremely bullish because this should crash. This this should absolutely just crater with this kind of formation. As soon as it gets below support, which right now is sitting at 1990 and it's below it. So it should crash. This should gap down violently on heavy volume. It's not doing it. It may still do it, but it's not doing it right now. That's actually bullish. Um, I played that. I played a bounce earlier today on the Chinese exchange. Uh, you can see right there um, we got to go to the one minute. There was a period of time here where the Chinese exchange was hitting this price of 13,000 yuan consistently. It was hammering it and it was trying to break through and it couldn't. And then it ticked down to 12,950. And then it immediately bounced back up here. And as soon as I saw that green candle come in there, I bought because I knew that it should have crashed and it did not crash. And if it, if it should crash and it doesn't crash, it's gonna rally. And that's exactly what happened. So um, that may be what's happening right now, uh, including what's happening on the Russian exchange. I'm again, not really gonna play this again until we're seeing prices of say, a lot cheaper. So let me show you how to do that if you don't wanna bother with the bother. Um, so one thing you can do here is just kind of scale in. So one way I would do that to scale back in is I would put, let's say 1800. We're thinking we're going to get an 1800 price on Bitcoin. I'm going to put a buy in at 1800 for one Bitcoin. Then assuming that we get real violence in the price chart, I'm going to put one in at 1700. And I'm going to put one in at 1600. Do I think we're going that low? I don't know. Put one in at 1500. And I will put 
I'll put one in at 1400 and then at 1300 I'm going to put two. Oops. So basically there's a couple advantages of doing this. Uh, it lets the market run to you rather than you chase the market. Um, because a lot of times the market jumps around it's very very difficult to predict and it's all over the place it's just so hard but if you put those in you can see them down here basically one bitcoin at 1800 1700 1600 1500 1400 1300 two and what's that going to look like on the chart you want to pull up the chart and try to get an idea of where those those are uh yeah that's that's a big crash um, so yeah, that's basically takes us back to right there. So that's, that's where I want to make my big buy. I'll probably increase the size of that if we actually get to that. So how bad is the damage been done to us? You can see my count, uh, 73,852. I was at what, we're close to 74,000. So really, um, when you scale in this way during a crashing market, uh, it's, it's, it's not that painful. It, you have to let it drop significantly before you start doing it, you know, uh, have a decent price. That's sometimes the way I will play a lot of the altcoins when I'm trading them. And like I said, again, I'm not trading any of them now when Bitcoin's in a bear market. But you can scale into these, uh, especially the ones that have a huge rally. Right now it's Bitmark. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't want to touch it because it's too thin, and also I don't I don't want to buy anything in a in a Bitcoin bear market. But yeah, I should have. But uh, what you can do is you can scale into them. Eventually, this is going to crash, uh, and usually they crash on these breakouts. It it probably crash you know down around to 42 here or 40 even. Sometimes they crash all the way down to where they started, and you can get in. And you can scale in the exact same way I just showed you with Bitcoin. You just come in here and you put a bid where you think it's going to go to, like maybe 43, 40. You put in a bid for something there. If it doesn't come in, uh, then it just, you know, you cancel it. But if, if you do get it, then if you're around the 50%, 60%, 70% 70% correction area on these, most of the time, like 70, 80, or 90% of the time, it's going to turn around and go up again. That's what I call the slingshot. I, I don't have one here on the chart, but uh, slingshot uh, formation is where it pulls back. It, this is kind of a slingshot formation right here. So a, a slingshot formation is where the market rallies on huge volume, it pulls back, and then it starts to come back up, and it's like pulling back a slingshot, and it just shoots up and takes out that older high. That's been one of the formations I've used to make a lot of these profits that I have in this account that I can't get off the account. Um, but uh, that's a very safe way of playing breakouts because uh, you know you're getting in down here where the price is really cheap. You don't have a lot of downside risk going against you. So let's take one more look here and then I'm just gonna get back to trading. It's probably gonna be another all-nighter because uh, Bitcoin is is really doing a heavy correction right now. Looks like we bounced back up to 1920. So if I get a bounce here of two or 300 points on Bitcoin, I will probably go all the way back to Tether and take a two or $3,000 profit and just sleep on that. But uh, we'll check up with you next time and show you where the trade went, and we'll talk to you next time.